Does anybody have any questions, comments, remarks, objections? I guess I do. Uh -huh. um, it appears to me like if uh, Bank A builds Bank B out of something, there's more value in Bank A's pocket, but it doesn't create any new wealth in society and any new uh, what, what Marx would call surplus value. And the only way to do that, in a realistic way, is through the exploitation of labor and the manufacturing process or something. Now, it's true that in this society the financial aspects became disengaged from uh, and expectations way beyond the possibility of the productive forces, and that led to the enormous dislocation and the crisis itself. But I do not believe that banks themselves create new value. They don't build a dam, they don't create roads. They, they, that, that you're, I'll use a fancy word, you're hypothesizing the money equivalent of surplus value and saying that they're generating it. The money itself may draw an interest, but that's because it's advanced usually to a capitalist who uses to invest and he expects to make more than the amount of interest that he pays. So in for conventional market term, the interest of the bank loan advances for capital purchase or maintenance of capital and the rent that the capitalist may pay if he doesn't own the land are all derivative of the surplus value created by the worker. And so I can see how a bank can make all kinds of money, but that doesn't mean that new value was actually created in that society at all. It, it may be a parasitic thing that takes a long time to reconnect to the base and leads to a financial explosion. Now that's how I would normally have formulated the crisis. And I honestly don't understand how you're saying that the banks through some magic cre actually create new value in the world. I, I, I don't understand them. Okay. Now I'm not saying they don't say that. I'm not saying the capitalist economists don't say that. But I think it's it's a, a fraud perpetrated on the people so that they don't understand that it's a surplus labor that the worker, the totality of the quantum of workers aren't paid for that then creates the possibility for capitalists, bankers, landlords to get a share out of this surplus value that's not paid to the working class. And uh, I'd like you to prove to me that they actually create new value. So my point is the whole capitalist class, the red TA, financial, are parasites in a sense. <coughs> Even if they pay the worker, worker his market wage and what he was worth as it were, they still don't create anything that builds up the, the world in any way whatsoever. They don't create a product, and you're, but you have turned that into really creating new value. So explain that to me other than repeating the same words. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> um, to pick up on the last point you made, a distinction <coughs> between, let's say, the real economy who build up things in the world. Yeah? Workers produce things, use means of production, they build stuff. Bridges, chairs, water bottles, tables, etc. Right. Okay. And on the other hand, banks that are parasites on that, only interested in money. One thing one might ask is, the real economy, the process of using labor, since when has the purpose of that been to just build up bridges? I didn't say purpose, I'm okay. talking about source of value. Source of value. Of a new additional value in the world. Okay. Yeah. Not one capitalist cheating another capitalist. So one guy had 10 million, now, and the other guy had five, now the other guy has 12 million and he has less. But still the total quantum of value is still there. It doesn't increase or augment anything. And if it does falsely augment it, like it did in the all the shenanigans, selling off derivatives and phony mortgages, it will lead to an explosion. Mm -hmm. And it always has. Mm -hmm. And a destruction of capital and wasting of old capital, allowing the capitalist class 
the sections that aren't destroyed to buy up cheaply and reinvest in new technology and not spend their money on the old technology. That's my understanding. It doesn't mean it's correct. <laughs> it might be archaic and conventional. Right. One, one difficulty I have is the terms you use actually describe financial capital. Certainly not a fan of it. But if just take a look at the world and what banks actually do. For me, it's hard to call that shenanigans or to see how, let's say, the money a banks make on derivatives, yeah, on the most complex, intricate derivatives, how the wealth they create or the wealth that they make there, yeah, the money they make, how that's any more real than the money you can get by exploiting labor. You mean less real? I'm sorry, less real. It certainly can be used for all the things that wealth can be used for in a capitalist economy. It can be used for the thing that is most important in a capitalist economy, that even defines it, to turn it into more money. In the sense that the money these banks make and the debts that they deal in function as capital, turning wealth into more wealth, and wealth in the sense that you can use it to really command the sources of wealth and make more, what the banks do is just as real as what the employers, as the wealth that the employers accumulate by exploiting labor, and it's just as much as, as just as much deserving of condemnation. I agree, but they are exploiting labor indirectly mm -hmm. because the capitalists and other investors fork over to them a certain share because they need to buy new equipment and and they need capital advances from the banks. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it has to be retied to the base. Otherwise, there is enormous dislocation and crisis in society. And it always happens about every 11 years, or they get carried away and they get disengaged and they have a crisis. And enormous amounts of capital are destroyed, which paves the way for a new recovery. Mm -hmm. What I don't see is they make money for themselves, but are they creating new value in society? That's what I don't understand. Maybe someone else can make it more simple. Anyone else want to try and make it more simple? <laughs> well, uh, you, you want to go ahead? Go ahead, Mike. Not 
the useful thing, but, but it is the, the, the might to have disposal over things in a world of property, of private property. And in this sense, this might of access, this might of two advancements of money, this might really is created by credit. We nowadays live in a world where the extension of capital is not limited to the accumulation of yesterday's uh, exploit, exploitation of labor, but it is actually limited by the chances of profits that are uh, uh, projected into the future. Expectations. Expectations, yeah. They can, and this is, this is something which nations, uh, in which nations differ uh, terribly. There are nations, and the U United States is over the last, last half century the most important one of them. Of them. But now the European Union, uh, with its money, with its currency, gets a similar ability. Nations differ not in the questions of have they people who can work, not even in the question have they uh, you know, natural resources and all that stuff. They differ in the question can they advance capital? And can they, they in fact, an advanced capital that has been earned, or capital that has been accumulated yesterday, but can they actually create out of nothing the advances with which capital business can be done and with which everything a nation needs, including weapons, can be financed. And this, in this way, banks actually create additional power of access by creating credit. And this is really a creation process. This has to be taken serious. This is really a creation out of nothing. One bank gives loans to another one. In the, uh, in the balance sheet of the one bank, the given money, the money that it has not anymore in its, in its pocket, is considered for itself as its asset. <coughs> money the bank does not have anymore is an asset. The other bank now has this money. What, what does it do with it? It lends it to a third bank or to somebody else. And again, the money exists in the hand of the lender, uh, of the borrower, and the asset exists in the hand of the lender. And by this, they multiply actually the money with which they can make investments and advances of any kind. And certainly your 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 point is perfectly right and I uh, uh, back it all the way. Crisis proves that credit is not money, but only an anti anticipation of future income. But this is uh, uh, this is not uh, to be understood in the sense of well, it is just a bit of an illusion. As long as it works, credit is capital. Credit is the might of advancing of do any advancements of money that that are, that are necessary for well all kinds of business in a nation. Lehman Brothers was the day before they crashed as rich as they were. They owned the building, they invested yeah. in the businesses. Yeah. This is the might they had and the wealth they owned. And ima imagine you, you look at you look at the wealth of this nation and the wealthy of this nation. 